Hello you. So today I'm working on color number 28 and you are going to be hearing my son in the background. If you watched my video where I drew for the winner of my giveaway, I had mentioned that um, uh, he had early release today and where he goes in at 1030 or gets picked up by the bus around 1030, I didn't think it made sense to go until 1145. So he is home and you will hear him in the background and I'm sorry about my dry fingers. I just washed dishes and did some cleaning around the house that I kind of let fall behind. So today I'm working on color number 38 if I didn't mention that already and as you can see it's kind of like a beigey off-white. It's very similar to what this one was but to be fair a lot of these colors on the bears are very similar and I have a knot. Sorry about that. Got the knot out eventually. Um, I feel like that's a little... I'm trying to be more in view. So as you probably know if you saw my community post, we had a family, not a family member, a really close family friend. I can say that fortunately, at least as far as we know, he did die of natural causes. I believe he was 72. I'm not totally sure. But this man would message my mother every single morning and just all of that good stuff. And when my sister, my twin sister, because she was the first one of us to get pregnant, when she got pregnant, he gave her a gift card to buy some stuff for her baby. And I don't know, he's just been really involved with our family. His wife did find him passed away at his desk um, when she woke up in the morning which is likely a suitable end for him, knowing him. So he passed happy and had a life well lived. Did I say a wife or a life well lived? Jeez, I cannot think today. Too much has been going on and I have too much stuff to organize and figure out. And it's just it's so frustrating, you know, sometimes you have those down days, especially after a death, and you really just don't want to do anything. I kind of didn't even want to cross stitch today, but I'm a few days behind on working on my Sailor Moon one daily, and I feel bad about that because I told myself I would learn self-discipline and stick to it, and I've not been doing that. It's okay. You're allowed to have off days. No one's always going to be 100% okay or in the mood to do certain things. As you can see, I'm still terrible at finding the hole when I'm doing it this way. But that's okay. So I know some of you cross-stitch, but not exactly how many are cross-stitch. <laughs> Where am I today? Diamond paint. Or I guess even this could be relevant for cross stitchers. I keep having really vivid dreams about all these diamond painting artworks that I really want to do. And in my dream, I just keep like struggling to find the time to get them done or stuff keeps popping up on me. And then I wake up like, oh my goodness, I'm going to work on that. And then catch myself like, wait, that was a dream. I don't actually own that. And then I get really sad about it, which is silly. But I have so many diamond paintings and cross stitches that I don't think I need to be sad about not having one that I had a dream about once. But it, it does seem to be a reoccurring dream for me. And I'm not sure why, because I don't diamond paint as much as I cross stitch. I cannot see that hole. 
Maybe it's a sign to stop neglecting my diamond painting so much. Uh, I wish I had gotten more done on this bear so far. It's just hard to work on it because how like how large it is. It's awkward to find a way to hold it appropriately. Like even having it hanging it hanging off my desk for this video is a bit odd because I have to be gentle because if I pull too hard I'm going to yank this whole thing right off my desk because it does have to be rolled up because it's so big. I am really excited to get my bear finished though. I'm going to be really excited when I get to the part with all the cute little ducks. Because I remember when I first unboxed the kit, I saw those cute little ducks. I was like, oh my goodness, look at those ducks. Sorry about any noises. I'm in a really old chair right now. And it's, uh, I don't know. I fell asleep. And apparently I didn't turn my heat on. Because I don't have my heat on often because it's either at like 76 degrees or it just doesn't turn on. And that's crazy to me and kind of irritating. So I keep it off and then turn it on for a little while. But usually I turn it on before bed so I don't wake up freezing cold. And I didn't do that last night and I also didn't know it was going to snow. So we were like sweating really bad last night in bed and I'm currently washing all of our bedding. I'm down to the last blankets and pillowcases because I'm sorry I don't want to sleep in a bed that we both sweat in all night and by we I mean my son and I we do co-sleep. Uh, I think it's just a comfort thing for both of us. So I washed all of our bedding but when I turned the heat on in my apartment, it started to get so humid in here. And now, like, my fake leather chair is all weird. I had to wipe my counters down, um, my windows, because I don't want any, like, condensation or whatever on them to end up freezing as we get more of the snow. Oh, hold on, I hear a vehicle approaching. Sorry about that. That was, um my son's father's family coming home. They live in the main house. I live in an apartment that's connected to their home. Um, they were gone for two days. I assume visiting him in Boston, because that's where he lives now. And I only know that through spread from word of mouth, however that saying goes, because he doesn't talk to me. But I was cat sitting for them, and I hope they know that I have laundry going, so I hope they didn't come home needing to do laundry. <laughs> but it's okay, my loads are almost done. I just have to wait for one load in the dryer to finish up, and then I can pop the last one in, and I am good to go. And I love sleeping on clean bedding, so... I'm probably going to take a shower right before bed because nothing says better sleep than clean bedding and just taking a shower. Like, nothing feels like it. And hopefully there's school tomorrow because I think my son's getting sick of being cooped up with me. I forgot that yesterday was a holiday because I wasn't keeping track of what day it was. And I made him wait outside for 30 minutes with me for the van to come pick him up. And when they weren't showing up, I ran inside real quick and checked the time. And then I realized, oh, they're probably not coming. So I checked my calendar, and my calendar said it was a holiday, but the school calendar didn't. So I guess that's where I got confused, because I do check their website every week. I don't know. It was weird but it happens right I felt bad for him too because I actually got him ready and everything and he was fully expecting to go to school just to not and at least today we determined that him going with 
early release was not a good idea. So I didn't have to, you know, get his stuff ready in front of him and get him falsely excited. I'm really happy he enjoys school though. I just kind of wish communication was clearer with the school because they seem to expect first time parents to really just magically know everything and I'm sorry it's just not like that not everyone has all the same resources or family connections or experience like I really feel like I was thrown in the dark with this stuff and it's just a little bit frustrating but we're getting there I feel like this needle is slightly bigger than the one I've been using to work on this. I could be wrong. I haven't cross-stitched in a minute, so I'm probably just not used to holding the needle again. But he's gonna be so cute. And I think the part I'm working on is actually an earmuff. Because I had to check the box. I wasn't... Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure if I trust these numbers, so I gotta check the color of the image versus the um, thread. Oh, come on. And yeah, it's earmuffs, and it does look this color. Even though the scarf does look a little bit different in colors and tones on the box, but that's okay, they're not always gonna match up perfectly. It's still a very cute image. And I'm so sorry for taking so long to start recording this video and get it up for you guys. I had a lot of dishes to do and I also had to start prepping some vegetables for my potato leek soup because my leeks were going to expire if I did not do them soon and Last time I accidentally dumped like half the thing of heavy cream in there and it just kind of tasted like chowder and that's not the flavor profile I was going for. So this time I'm going to do it again but I'm going to measure out the cream before I pour instead of just pouring it directly from the container because I really liked the flavor profile before I accidentally dumped way too much more cream in there. And I really want this to work as something that's not a chowder because I feel like anyone can make a chowder because you're really just throwing heavy cream in your soup or sometimes cornstarch and stuff like that. And that's not what I want for this. I'm struggling again. Here we go. Ooh, what did I do? retreat because I did something I shouldn't have. Let's try that again. Here we go. I must have gone through my thread when I was coming back up. <sighs> I don't know what to do with myself most days. I finally got the yarn I need to make my second custom sweater top or sweater crop top, shirtless sleeves, whatever you want to call that. I foolishly only bought one skein from Walmart with my grocery order because I already had a skein here. But that's like a rookie mistake that I should not be making since I've been crocheting for so long and of course they are very different lots like dye lots okay someone's not sitting even here So yeah, they're very different dye lots. One was kind of like firmer and silkier. One felt a little bit rougher and looked a bit fuzzy. 
and uh, I had to ask my mother if she could grab me one because what is wrong with me today? <laughs> if you use Walmart's delivery, you know that there is an order minimum, I think, of $30. And since I had just bought groceries, I didn't need anything. And so I had asked my mother if she could grab me one next time she went to the store. And she did. But she didn't just grab me one, she grabbed me four. Was it four or five? Anyways, it's Red Heart, the camouflage yarn, and those are some big skeins, and I barely use two for um, the shirtless sleeve sizes and this this lady brought me five but I appreciate her because now I have enough from the same lot to make this person's custom order and really that's all you need and then the first custom order she just received her crop top sweater and she sent me some pictures and she's so beautiful in it. It suits her so well. She's such a sweetheart. And she says she definitely wants to come back and order again. And she did wait quite a while for me to be able to get the yarn to remake that sweater for her. Some people are just really so sweet. I'm starting to realize that eating mango habanero sauce on lettuce and chicken was probably a bad idea right before recording a video because I'm really starting to get heartburn and I don't have any Pepsid or Tums or um, what is it, a Meprazol. Why do I do the things that I do? But I do gotta say the Sweet Baby Ray's mango habanero sauce is really good because that was my first time trying it and I think it's now my new favorite mango habanero sauce. And if you don't know, when I eat chicken, mango habanero is my go-to, but this one's now my favorite, hands down. It's cheaper and I get more of it in a bottle, so it's going to last me longer as well. And it doesn't have too, as much of a kick as the Buffalo Wild Wings one. That one I feel like the heat kind of overrides the flavor. But I'm not saying that it's impossible to have something really spicy and still be super flavorful because I've had plenty of amazing ghost pepper sauces with tons of flavor. But I do know that it's an issue where some spicy foods tend to not have much of a flavor profile. They just kind of have the heat to them. But I'm a spicy girl. Like, my favorite salsa is obviously Mango Habanero Salsa. I don't remember the name of the brand, though. I know that I had it remembered incorrectly for such a long time, so I'm scared to say it because I know I'm going to say it wrong. Making progress. Oh, here comes little man. And I can't find the hole again. Hi, honey! Alright. I don't know what it is about that TV, but it seems like the volume just turns itself up because he doesn't know how to turn it up and it's very hard to turn the volume up or down because it's a really old TV. I got it for free from a friend like four or five years ago but it's the only one that will fit on the stand in my bedroom otherwise I'd have the Roku so I would have a remote to use the volume but nope we're stuck around 18 on the volume and ugh, it's just so loud at night when I want to relax I don't want really loud noises when I'm trying to simmer down for the night, you know?
You know what these bears kind of remind me of? They, they kind of... They kind of remind me of the bears from We Bear Bears. I can't remember if that's like a Cartoon Network show or what channel that's from. But it reminds me of the polar bear from We Bear Bears and I just had it. Come on. I'm going to go insane. This is kind of why I don't like working on this kit. <laughs> At least not during the day or at my desk. Super frustrating. Yeah, that area is not going to be the cutest. Hmm, whatever. I don't care. What I do care about is I don't want to have to cook my food tonight but like I really want to eat it so I kind of have to make it if I want to eat it right. This is what I hate about living by myself or even the fact that my son is like limited in his palate. He won't eat most foods I cook and he won't eat like any like properly prepared meal. He'll eat things like chicken nuggets, french fries, and sliced fruit, and that's about it. Well, and chips. So even when I do cook, I don't have anybody to share it with, and I don't know. I kind of miss the days when I had someone to share my food with, or, you know, to cook for, because, you know, doing things for other people makes you feel good about yourself, right? And sometimes you just need that. One thing I definitely want to try making again is Russian tea cakes. I used to make those all the time in high school and they were so good. But as I got older, you know, I'm not sure if they're called tea cakes anymore or moon cakes, but I think they're moon cakes. It's a very kind of firm, flaky cookie and it has powdered sugar on it. I'm so sorry for all the struggling you guys are watching me go through right now. Now oh, come on. I hope that's in there right. <laughs> Oh, poor little bear, just stabbing him. Well, I guess it's not him, since it is just the ear muff. Cute little lad, with his little broom. Working on the street sweeper. Definitely an old tiny village. You can tell because of, if you look at the main image, they are hanging laundry, which not a whole lot of people do, at least in the U.S. anymore, unless they're older generations. And there's a street sweep for two. You don't see that anymore, except for, I think, isn't it Mexico, New Mexico? I know one of those areas. They are so good at keeping their streets cleaned. Which is interesting. I like learning facts like that. I know they say knowledge is power, but I feel like that doesn't really give me much power. But it's really cool to know and understand other people's cultures better. And I'm probably going to stop once I finish this part of the earmuff. I do have other chores to attend to and I do have to go swap my laundry because where it's my bedding. I do want my bedding for bedtime and I don't think I have to explain that to anybody so.
And then I feel like my son really wants to play because when he just came out here, he was listening to head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I'm trying to dance, so I think he wants to spend some time with me. And since he's stuck at home and can't go see his peers, I think it's only fair that we do a little bit of dancing together. Here we go. I hope my mother's doing okay today. I should probably also call her. I did try and reach out this morning, but she has not been responding. I think she took it pretty hard, the death, because of where they had daily interactions and he was just always there giving her kind words of encouragement and saying good morning and good night for, oh gosh, I wanna, I think like 16, 19 years. Goodness, I can't imagine how it feels to just wake up one morning not get your good morning text from them and just know. I know she cried a lot about it. I feel so terrible for her. And his wife, obviously. I hope she's doing okay. But she seemed to be comforted knowing that it was of natural causes because that does happen. I think the scariest part about death is knowing or trying to comprehend that they're not there anymore and the fact that more often than not you don't know when it's going to come and that's what's scary about it. And I also had a scare with my grandmother and I found out the same day I found out about his death and that was very upsetting because apparently my grandmother had COVID and she was blacking out and she has heart conditions so she's already pretty frail at this point and I am a big Grammys girl so I don't know what I'm gonna do if my grandmother passes away before coming to visit me because it's been years and I really just I wish they would come back but my grandfather doesn't want to come live in our home state but they are considering moving closer so I'm just kind of hoping that it's true and that they do move closer and soon because I know my aunt and uncle they moved closer because their daughter and her um, well I guess husband now they didn't have like a big showy wedding they just went to the courthouse I believe but they got married and they left the state that my son was born in, which is where all my family was for some time. Oh, come on. And they moved closer to be closer to them. So I feel like my family slowly migrates with each other, but just not at the exact same time. So hopefully I get to see them soon. This one goes this way. Sorry, I know you can't really see it, but I have to move this to be able to see it myself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you're just looking at my floor. Alright, and there we go. We have, sorry about that, I accidentally turned my camera off somehow, but we have completed most of one little earmuff on our street sweeper. Alright, well thank you guys for stitching with me today. I hope you guys had a really good weekend and that you don't deal with too much of this really bad weather that has been going around. So stay safe if you have been. Leave a comment because I love hearing what you have to say. Give the video a like if you would like to support me. And subscribe if you haven't already and like stitching along with crafty friends. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!